we've got Janine Gamalin. Yeah. Yeah. And she was kind of on the, obviously she was the big dog mm -hmm. in 2017 and even 2018, but she never really kind of came back to form after that. Yeah. I see myself. Yeah. Are you behind or what I'm saying? Yeah. No, we're spot on now. Yeah. yeah. So who would you say you were most nervous of, obviously, on the start line? You'd obviously raised um, these girls before. All of them really. Like you like more obviously Emma Twig and Carla would be the ones kind of. Yeah. Uh, but also Caroline Zima, you never know what she's gonna pull out of the bag. Um like you you couldn't kind of write off anyone no of course like yeah yeah no carling is so hit and miss and obviously like a massive sprinter and kind of comes out of nowhere at the end or else misses all yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think you were more ner nervous for 2019 than 2018 going in as world champion or do you think you were more confident having done it before? Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because you have different expectations then. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think it is harder to return when you are the world champion because you have everything to lose. Yeah. As if you come in as an underdog, you just, it, you it's shot. a little bit more fun. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the fact what was happening that summer kind of took a lot of that pressure off my shoulders as well because I knew yeah. even if I just qualified that would be good enough. So Absolutely. whatever came after was like a bonus. So yeah. It's... Yeah. When you but think... obviously when you're there, like you you want to do your best anyway. Yeah. To think that this was the first kind of time of the Olympic qualifiers when you actually had just qualified at the World Championships, like. Um, yeah, think I know. of how devastating those B finals were the, in 2015 yeah. and 2011. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I was more nervous before semi final than final. Yeah. Because that's where the big tickets are given out. And yeah. What do you, how do you like to approach the start? What's your kind of mindset? Is it one stroke at a time or? Um, find your rhythm yeah or... just kind of no, not to screw it up <laughs> yeah just get, get as as fast as you can but like not by ripping it apart but by being actually efficient with it and yeah try to kind of get that rhythm as early as possible um yeah so you have I still have to work on my start and my first stroke is terrible so <laughs> that's something I've I've given a year to improve on that now. <laughs> but like straight away you have um Biggie Torley and Emma Twig shot out. Do you remember yeah. if that true you at all or would you have been aware at that point in the race? Uh, no, not not as early in, in the race that yeah. you wouldn't no. Um I kinda I knew like watching the previous races and looking at the results, I knew that I wouldn't be there right in front of the blocks, but I, I could be there by 250 or 500. And uh, obviously Emma did a different plan in the final, so. Yeah. Your race plan is obviously very different now to maybe previous years, or, or maybe it's just your physiology allows you to do it, but you kind of seem to approach your races now where you just go out and stomp it from the start and. Uh, put as much distance in no matter where you are in the race or, or put put down as much effort and speed no matter where you are uh, whether you're in qualifying position in the semi-final or um uh, out in front you still seem to kind of race your best race was that a like deliberate change in race plan or is it just something that's kind of come with the physiology and the training you've been doing uh, it was both. So I think the race plan came first and then obviously within the last couple of years, the physio physiology kind of helped that plan as well. Uh, I started this race plan back in 2017 at the Worlds and I really liked it because it made 
the race feel shorter and there was a lot of focus during the race in certain points. Um, yeah, I quite liked it. And so obviously with physiology improving, it was easier to execute it as well. Yeah. So it was kind of... It's almost I think, maybe a bit simpler as well. It's like... Yeah, it's very simple. Um, I'm going to sell it after I finish. <laughs> I'm not, not going to give out my secrets now, but yeah, I really like it. And yeah. it's simple and um, yeah, easy to execute in a way. Yeah. And so, you okay. always know what to do. Like you're not caught out and just like thinking, okay, what will I do now? But you, yeah. I'm sure all, all the elite athletes have their race plans nailed and they know what they're doing at any part of the race. Yeah. Oh, for sure. People get it wrong as well. But, um, okay, you're coming into the 1K here and Emma Twig is a length up and probably in none of the earlier rounds of this World Champs was Emma kind of faster to the first K. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I was kind of glad that I got to race her in a semi-final. Yeah. And uh, I was ahead at that point. So, so what was your... Yeah, it was kind of strange to see her, like quite far ahead of me but um at the same time I knew like she must have changed a plan and she's done something different this time so I just have to kind of keep my cool and even looking at the speeds like the speed didn't drop off and stuff it was the same speed kind of throughout the race and uh, yeah it was more like just sticking to your own boat and trusting yourself yeah. you're doing your best race at the time was it, did it cross your mind at any point that, oh, she's just like, you know, held her cards close to her chest all through this regatta and now she's actually, you know, showing her speed? Or do you think you just kind of stay focused on your own race then? Was there ever a doubt? Kind of, I guess? Well, if, even if there was a very small, I just kind of got my head back to my own race very fast and just said, like, just do your best and that's all you can do. So I just kind of stuck to my race plan and just kept going and... Uh, I knew my push would come towards the end of the race, not the beginning. Yeah. So, and just had to be patient and like, like, who knows, like it could have been a different end maybe, but, um, you would have probably, yeah, the, the thing was not to panic really. And I think that's also a lesson I can learn from that race and carry it forward for the next one, maybe when I'm not ahead or, somebody else is ahead of me you know not necessarily Emma but uh, yeah. just trust trust your own process instead of uh, what everybody else is doing 100 percent brilliant okay so you're in the last 500 and you've got it down to a length at this point so um do you think you felt pretty confident there that you heard stirring maybe coming back into view or how do you feel yeah, going into the I heard boys shouting as well from the side to go now. And I was like, well, okay, last 750, I suppose I might as well. And then I started building. And at one stage I looked aside and I saw that I was gaining it. And then I had no doubt after that. I just kind of kept pushing on and I knew the last 500, I can push on a little bit more. And uh, yeah, it was kind of rewarding to see that with every stroke that I pushed, I was closer and closer. And then Absolutely. look at your speed there. Like it's, uh, uh, so much you're blown everybody away yeah absolutely that's the thing with the single skull you can do really well at the front at the first part of the race and you don't know how many beans you will have left at the end so it's kind of sometimes you have to take that gamble and hope that you're gonna last but i've been in a position when i've done that and i didn't last so <laughs> kind of, um but yeah it was it was a really fun race and do you think you actually enjoyed the last 250 meters? Yeah, there was definitely. Hurting, what do you think? Enjoying the pain knowing it's yeah. not worth it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah. That mentality of not just beating her, but just keep going even beyond that is it's so impressive. And I think it's like a brilliant way to race. And um, I think a lot of athletes can learn a lot from it keep building that it builds your confidence right god i want to be that fit again <laughs> <laughs> oh no doubt girl <laughs> oh. no it was amazing double world champion so um so do you think 
going through the line there, if you compare it to 2018, um, what's the change in kind of reaction post race? Is it still elation or is it relief or is there is it, was it different from 2018 to 2019? Uh, it definitely was different for many reasons. Like 2018 was absolutely magic. Like I never knew that I can be a world champion, and there I was, like, confidently winning it. As 2018, there's obviously a little dose of expectation. Then, if I put expectation, whatever happened for personal reasons during that summer, it was really mixed emotions. You just didn't. I didn't know what to expect. I I knew I wanted to win, but I didn't know if I even deserve to win because I didn't have that much time put into training as I had the year before. Um, yeah, it was definitely a bit of a relief, a bit of a joy, a bit of everything. And uh, yeah. yeah, it was amazing. Okay, so what was going through your head when Emma was out in front there? Um, I try to stick to my race plan and not to panic about it because I knew from the previous races that we were kind of equal enough speed and uh, that if she was so far ahead that she must have done something different and you never know when people do different things it plays out differently as well so uh, yeah the the main thoughts were just to stick to your race plan and keep going and do the pushes where you need to do them and and carry on and do your best really <laughs> like that's yeah. all you can ask of yourself. I know that totally worked out. Um, coming into a world championship, is there like a key session or a favorite session that you like to do um, that kind of gives you the confidence that you're in the best shape and ready to race? Like maybe it's a particularly really hard session or um, a certain type of pieces uh, in your prep that kind of just gives you that last bit of confidence going into your racing. Um. I can't actually single out one session for it because we did so many different sessions for so many different stimulus. You know, uh, there's longer pieces, there's really short sprint pieces and a bit of everything. What did give me a confidence was, uh, let's say, doing the sprinting sessions, I could see the, the numbers on my speed coach that I haven't seen all season. So you kind of take confidence from that, that you are going the fastest you've ever gone. And even the ratings, you can go really high up the rate without losing the length of your stroke. It's just those small little things. And uh, also I knew if we will finish the camp, we will be in a good shape. So it's just yeah. trusting uh, that coaches know what's the best for you to do to be ready for the championships. And yeah. because we did it really well the year before, I had no reason not to trust them that they would give us the best plan possible. Yeah. The plan was a little bit different this uh, 2019 from 2018. But uh, yeah, the changes were good. And I think... Yeah, I can't sing that one session, but there's like just the whole thing combined. Whole thing combined. Yeah, combined. yeah, those three weeks of preparation is what's really essential. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, is there any, or which of the like Irish crews do you most like to pace against kind of in the <laughs> uh, sessions coming up? Obviously, there's oh, so. the lightweight double. <laughs> yeah, the lightweight double wasn't there this time. So. I know, I know. Uh, I found myself working off with the reserve pair. I find that they were the ones who would push me. Let's say if I get a head start, they'll be gaining on me and I'll try to stay away from them as long as I can. And then if they catch me, I'll try to catch them back during a sprint. So it was a really good match, I think, for both of us. Yeah. Because they didn't want to get beaten and I didn't want to get beaten. So we'll be beating each other for the whole course, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they you totally definitely were the two for, for me to get faster. Yeah. yeah. You totally need that when you're in a single. Um, so look, it's been a long journey to 2018 success. Um, but if you were to go back to your, the 2012 cycle or the 2016 cycle, what would you have done differently? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the short Uh, yeah, like, I could say I could have trained harder, but at the same time, at that moment in time, I was training as hard as I could. So uh, I don't know if I would have done anything differently. Maybe I, be I would have believed in myself a little bit more. Yeah. But then knowing myself, I probably wouldn't have. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, well, it, 
2016, I definitely would change maybe some bits if I could go back. Like racing 2015, maybe I wouldn't do that crazy move I did in the B final, but I would have raced it smarter. Maybe I I would have qualified straight away. It's like little things, but you never know. And I do believe that you do learn from all the mistakes you've made. Yeah, like totally. Yeah, now, to be course. honest, it's a trick question. <laughs> I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think like how much sweeter is it now that all those years that you put in and um, maybe the ups and downs just surely makes it it be all the sweeter when when you finally get there because it's just been that long journey. Yeah. Yeah. It no. definitely does, yeah. 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 Although it would be nice to have a bit more medals in, like, on a shelf, you know. But at the same time, the few I have, they're very precious. So, hundred percent, yeah. No, absolutely. And um, finally, how how are you getting on at the moment, basically, um, with the postponement <coughs> of the Olympics and uh, trying to stay in the mindset of a world champ, um, with another year to train uh, for twenty twenty one Olympics. Uh, do you want a truth or a lie? <laughs> <laughs> you can give a, give a nice version of the truth. Modified version. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not easy. Like, there are days that are harder than others. And I don't know, you just have to take one day at a time and do the best you can. Uh, like, it's even now watching the race, I'm like, oh, my God, I was so fit. And I know I'm nowhere near at the moment nowhere near that fitness but I'm also not far off so I think the main focus should be really on mentally staying well during this time yeah. and maybe sacrifice a few physiological gains or your mental wellness and get out of this phase like positive and not burnt out by training alone all the time yeah. but yeah it's like it is challenging I mean looking at the wall when you're doing your tough work sessions without any teammates to push you along it's yeah it's it's tough uh but what doesn't break you makes you stronger right yeah yeah 100 percent. you're a testament to that no okay thank you so much um selena uh you're a true champion i think for everybody in rogue ireland and not, not at the moment, but hope no. for him at some stage. <laughs> no, once a world champion, always a world champion. So thank you very much.